Hi, welcome to VR Up Developer Log Number 12. This episode is all about adding hand tracking support to my WebXR3.js VR client application. I'm going to be sharing how I added it and some of the things I learned along the way. This involved a lot of code, so I have decided to share a simplified version of the code so that you can use it in your WebXR applications, or at least learn from it. I'll put a link in the description of this video. Currently, I'm not replicating the hand gestures to other clients, that's on the to-do list, so you only see your hands and fingers moving on your local client. However, this does mean that you should be able to interact with the world even if you're using a device without controllers, like a MetaQuest in hand tracking mode, or Apple Vision Pro. To start with, you can move around by pointing with your index finger and using your thumb to activate the movement. Your hand must be facing down, and your middle, ring and pinky must be folded. Interacting with the menu system is initiated by bringing your thumb and index finger close together and then pinching to activate. So with that out of the way, let's get into some details. Getting hand tracking working involves two major components. The first is adding the hands to the scene and getting the hand location and rotation data. The second is interpreting the hand gestures and movements so that you can interact with things. WebXR and 3.js make interacting with the controllers relatively easy and you even get some gesture support out of the box, like the pinch action. Adding the controllers and hands to the scene in 3.js involves first getting the WebXR manager from the renderer and then using the XR controller model factory and XR hand model factory objects to add the controllers add the hand models to the scene. There are three out of the box hand models that can be selected when calling create hand model. Spheres. Boxes or mesh. They will only appear when in hand tracking mode. You will have to do this for both the left and right hands, controllers 0 and 1. I listen for the connected and disconnected events so I know when the user changes from one input type to another. The event.handedness property will contain a left or right depending on which hand the controller is in, and you can detect if it is a hand or a controller by checking that the event.data.hand property is set. I found it was useful to abstract out the input position, input rotation and pointer, as they will be different for mechanical and hand input. If you hold the controllers in your hands, palms down, they will have different axis rotations and relative positions to hands. For example, the left controller x-axis will point down and the right will point up and the pivot point will be around the fingers. Both hands x-axis point the right and the pivot point is at the wrist. I standardized the location and rotation of both the controllers and the hands so they appear the same to the application. They both appear to have a pivot point around the wrist with the x-axis pointing to the right and the y-axis pointing up. This will make it a lot easier in the future to attach things to the VR hands so that they appear in the same locations relative to the user's actual hands. When a hand is connected the event.data.hand property is set to an XR hand space containing a list of all the joints in the hand, their locations and rotations. The joints are referred to by names defined in the W3C WebXR hand input module, I'll put a link in the description. In 3.js these joints appear as standard 3.js scene nodes, so it is easy to get the position and rotation of the joints using the getWorldPosition and getWorldQuaternion functions. Currently, when in hand mode, I hide the avatar's hands and replace them with the standard WebXR mesh hand models. I did this for a few reasons. First, the hands better map to the user's hands, second, some avatar models don't have fully rigged hands and fingers, but mainly, I still have to work out how to map WebXR hand input coordinates and rotations into a hand armature. Add this one to the to-do list as well. It looks a little odd, to start with, as it looks like I have grey gloves on, but I've got used to it and I actually prefer it now as they more accurately represent the actual positions of my real hands and fingers. There are a few ways to perform hand gesture detection, ranging from hard coding positions to trained AI-like models. I have come up with a very simple gesture pattern to get up and running. It will probably become more complex as needs arise, but I decided to keep it simple to start with. I'm actually really happy with it and it works well. One of the major lessons I learned from this work was that hand gestures are very difficult to work with at VR. Pointing to things is easy, but distinguishing between different activities by only using the hands can be difficult. The main reason for this is that hand tracking is currently performed on most devices using the cameras on the headset. They may not always be able to see all the fingers all the time. When adding gestures, you really need to think will this gesture be visible? 
That's why the movement and pointer gestures are using the index and thumb, as they are almost always in view of the cameras. The XR gesture tracker is responsible for using the joint information XR hand space to determine some fundamental things about the position of the hand. These can then be queried and combined to determine a gesture. For each finger, it determines if it is pointing. It calculates two vectors, one from the proximal phalanx, the knuckle, to the intermediate phalanx, the next joint up, and then from the distal phalanx and the tip of each finger. If the dot product between these two vectors is small, the finger is pointing. I also record the location of the base of the finger, the knuckle, the direction the finger is pointing and the location of the tip of the finger. Using this information, I then calculate the thumb index distance between the tip of the index finger and the tip of the thumb used for the pinch action and the angle thumb index angle used for the walk activate action. I also work out the direction the palm is facing, but to do this I need to take into consideration the rotation of the player's head. I get the head rotation from the current camera and calculate the forward, up, and right vectors. This is necessary so that if the user turns around, the palm's direction remain consistent. I then get the wrist rotation and determine which direction the palm of the hand is facing by comparing it with the up, forward, and right vectors of the head. The palm can be facing up, down, forward, or backwards. I also take into consideration whether it's the left or right hand to determine if the hand is facing inward or outward. This sounds like a lot of work, but I can now use combinations of this information to detect gestures. For example, if the index finger and thumb are pointing and the other fingers are not and the palm is down, I'm initiating a walk gesture. If the thumb index angle then drops below 20 degrees, I move the user to where the index finger is pointing to. I abstracted out the location and direction of the pointer. For the mechanical controller, the pointer is always on and is set by the orientation of the controller and is activated by the squeeze button event. The pointer for the hand is a little more difficult. I experimented with a few implementations, like having it come out of the index finger directly, but when I tried to activate it by pinching, the pointer would zoom off the menu item. Having the pointer between the index finger and the thumb feels more natural, as it's like operating a mouse. To give it even more of a mouse-like feel, the pointer origin actually extends from the shoulder to the midpoint of the index and thumb. I calculate the shoulder based on the head location. It's subtle, but I found it gives the pointer a nice feeling. Another subtle addition to the movement of the pointer was to dampen its movements. I'm not overjoyed with this, as it makes the pointer feel a little sluggish, however, the hand tracking is not 100% accurate. If you don't do this, it makes it very difficult to select items. When you pinch the index finger and the thumb, the midpoint of the index and thumb would move quickly, moving the pointer off the item you're trying to select. Damping it makes selecting things a lot easier. Well, that's about it. Here are some of the key points to remember. Add both the controller and hands to the scene. Use the connected and disconnected events to determine the input device. Abstract out the controller and hand locations so that swapping between them is seamless to the application. Abstract out the pointer location and direction, as they may originate from different locations for different input methods. Try to keep your gestures simple and within the view of the camera. Dampen the pointer location and direction, as hand tracking is not 100% accurate. Don't forget to like or subscribe if you like this video. I hope you have found it interesting and the sample code useful. See you in the metaverse. VR me up.